Good morning. What a beautiful autumn morning it was. Nice and brisk. Uh, changing of the color of the trees. Just a reminder that rain is before us. I was tempted to say snow, but out here we get the, the liquid kind. It's much nicer. Um, <clears throat> there's one thing that if you would like to put a little extra joy in your Thanksgiving, we would ask your help with. To my left, your right, right over here, are some messages of joy. Uh, they're Bibles, all wrapped as uh, ready to be put in uh, to the post office. The postage is three or four dollars. There's only, I think, 30 of them there. So you know what? For less than the price of a radio tire, you can find your way in to the prison. You won't have to hear the uh, clanging of that steel. How many have ever done prison ministry? Oh, good. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a certain ring as you go in that you will remember as a steel meets steel. And it rings in your mind until you leave. But you won't even have to go uh, into the jails today. I'm going to ask you if you'd like to mail uh, one, two, four, five, six. If you'll just come forward at this time and then we're going to start our message. You will be able to take Christ's word of hope to those who have plenty of time to read it. The closest mailbox, if you look for the mail, uh, the post office in Newhall, it has moved. Most of you know where Walmart is on the old road. It's uh, just a couple of units up uh, from Walmart. So that's the closest mailbox, Canyon Country. I'm not sure about there uh, are other places. You'll want to tell them it's media rate and it'll be somewhere between three or four dollars. If you're shy and don't want to come forward now, you can do so uh, after our service as well. There may be a few Bibles left. In just a few days, over 46, it's estimated over 46.9, I don't know how they come up with these estimates for sure, millions of Americans will travel 50 miles or further to be with their family for Thanksgiving. I got to thinking about it. What would a perfect Thanksgiving meal look like in your mind? It's been a long time, over 360 plus days, or 350 days since the last Thanksgiving, but I remember it. And what I remember about, I anticipate for the next one. Mountains of mashed potatoes covered with rivers of gravy dressing and vegetables. Oh, and then there's the pies and the cakes and the ice creams. And I will indulge myself at least one day a year and eat just the right amount, not too much all at once. Probably I will go back for dessert a little later. I always leave room because for some reason it tastes just a little bit better the second time around. So about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, after it all settles down, I'll go back for a little more mashed potatoes, a little more turkey or torkey or whatever it is that you eat. And if I'm lucky, a little Ben and Jerry's. Vanilla ice cream is good, but Ben and Jerry's just has a little extra punch to it. The Cherries Garcia, if you haven't tried it, it's worthy of Thanksgiving. Oh, you, you're already thinking about it. I can see it in your eyes. And you're already thinking of the taste. The good news is, if you stay by, after church we have a fellowship lunch that is just going to water your appetite for Thanksgiving dinner. I'd like us to turn our thoughts today to three, three different meals, three different blessings that God blesses us with. We've been looking at a series of heart matters. 
And God cares so much for us that he takes care of the completeness of our lives. For you see, the first one that he takes care of is our physical needs. Our message today is give thanks to whom? Give thanks to God. So in the New Testament, Jesus is concerned about our physical needs. We just described how we will sit around tables and we'll enjoy each other's company. But in all of, all of that visitation, in all of the fantasy football games that you will keep track of, and all of the football games that you will watch, sometimes we lose track of giving thanks to God. He blesses us so much so from the physical sense in providing us with our food. In fact, the scriptures, is, the scriptures are filled with the ways that God has provided for the physical needs of his people and his disciples while he was here on earth. You can read the story in detail in Mark chapter 8. Whereas he had, uh, as crowds had uh, drawn to uh, listen to his words, um, and they were needful of want to feed them, they brought forward seven loaves, and they and after he had given thanks, he broke them in verse 6, and gave thanks and told his disciples to distribute to the people, and they did so. And they had a few f small fish as well, and he gave thanks for them also, and he told his disciples to distribute them, and the people ate and were satisfied, and afterwards the disciples picked up, what does the Bible say? They started with seven, how many did they end up with? Well, in Mark chapter uh, chapter. Uh, it's, verse 8 says, The people ate, and they were satisfied afterward. The disciples picked up seven baskets of broken pieces that were left over. And when they fed the 4,000, the same thing. They ended up with more than what they started with. It's an amazing thing. When God blesses, He blesses not just enough. He blesses in large ways. We sometimes wonder, how are we going to take care of the needs? This congregation, in case you didn't, didn't read your bulletins well, are, is participating in a very meaningful way to providing food, not for 100 or 200, but for 1,000 families during Thanksgiving Day. 300, which will prob three to 400, which will be in the senior center, and meals will be taken into the community. I say thank you very much upon those who will be blessed because of what you have done. But God cares for us so much that he meets our needs physically. Do you find that to be true? Now some of you may, some of you, some of you may at this time in your life have more month left at the end of the paycheck or at the end of the money. And you may struggle from month to month, but God somehow sees fit to put food on your table just in time. Do you find that to be true? And he blesses and pours out his blessing. To God, we give thanks for the way that he provides for us physically. But when we look at life, to God, we give thanks for the way that he provides for our soul needs. He takes care of us, not only physically, but in heart matters. We can be, we can be well fed physically and have empty hearts. We can be well taken care of physically and have emotional needs that we, we just long to have met. So how does he take care of us during this Thanksgiving season? The scripture records, and we will partake of the communion service today. There's three meals that I call your attention to. The first is his taking care of the physical needs of his disciples. The second is when he takes care of our hearts. For he wants to minister to us that we will have the completeness of well-being. Heart matters, and in the communion service, 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 23 through 26, verse 24 in particular. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in what? In remembrance of me. We want to camp out here for just a moment or two. Because we, we have heard this verse so many times that the nuances of it and the fullness of it and the meaning of it sometimes just kind of escapes us. The disciples didn't fully understand this when he said these words, this do in remembrance of me. Because when Jesus, as he gave thanks for, as he gave thanks in the upper room for the last supper that he would have with his disciples, could see forward to his crucifixion on the cross. And the depth of the sacrifice, without the full assurance that his sacrifice would be sufficient, that heaven would be able to forgive the sins of men. There was a moment of darkness that Christ could not see when he hung on the cross through to the other side. But he was willing to move forward the depth of the sacrifice. The physical needs. How is it in your heart? and the connection spiritually with our Lord Jesus Christ today, as we will partake of the communion service today. Is there fullness of restoration in forgiveness? Is there fullness in restoration of communion with your brothers and sisters in Christ? Internally in your own family, externally beyond as you move beyond your church family at work, do you have the harmony Or is there something that you need to say, Lord, give me that forgiveness anew today as I partake of your body which is reflected in the symbol of the bread and your blood which is given through the cup as a symbol of forgiveness of that which I have received. The fullness of the communion service is a meal that illustrates His caring for us physically, His caring for us in heart matters, in reaching into our hearts with a complete forgiveness. But there's this third meal, there is a third meal that is represented, a meal meal of the past as Christ has given us the communion service. He says, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. There is a third meal, one yet coming when we will see Jesus again. For the meal of the past is past, the meal of the present is present, but I long for that time when we will see Jesus face to face. How about you, friends? I long for that time when we will sit at the banquet table with Christ. I long for that time. I'm not sure how it will be laid out. I was trying to think, how is it we're going to be gathered with a great multitude around that banquet table? How is it we will look out and we will see Moses? We will see Elijah. We will see our brothers and sisters that we've had, that we've had to say, Farewell for a temporal time as they rest in the grave. We look over friends that we haven't seen. And we will see them, we will see them with 2020 vision. They may be light years away from us. I don't know how it will happen, but I can't wait to be there. How about you, friend? I can't wait to be there. Now, in my mind, it's only my imagination. I don't, I can't, I can't give you verse in scripture. But I just somehow envision Christ will be in the center. Christ will be in the center. The center of all of this. And around him will be 360 degrees of seating in an amphitheater. So everybody will be able to turn their focus to Jesus. 
and they will be able to be in his presence. And somehow, our eyes, we have limited vision now. Somehow we will be able to see panoramically, 360 degrees. So if you're sitting there and you want to see Hank, who you haven't seen for the last 20 years, you're wondering, where is he? While you're able to focus on Christ, you're able to resource everybody around you. And you go, oh, Hank's here, Mary's here, Tom's here, the person who introduced me to Jesus is here. And it will be an amazing place, won't it? We will lift our voices in song, in such song of praise that has never been heard before. For the fallen know of the relationship with Jesus in a way that unfallen angels don't. And through, through, the, uh, through the expansiveness of the universe, that song of praise of the redeemed will carry forward. I'm longing for that day. Our physical needs, our needs were met on the cross, but there's a third meal yet to be partaken of by you and me. And that's the meal before the throne of Jesus. i just like to share with you, I have two favorite books in my library. The first is the Scriptures. I've got a, I have to ask you a question. How many of you brought your Bibles today? Great, and some of you brought them electronically on your phone and your iPad and that kind of stuff. Great. The second book that I like, I like to read is a book called The Desire of Ages. It's about the life of Jesus. If you don't have it and want one, talk to me afterwards and write, write your name on, on one of the cards in the pew and put there, I'd like a copy of The Desire of Ages, and we'll see that you get one. Desire of Ages. I want to share with you two salient quotes from there before we, uh, before we separate for the uh, foot washing service, Seventh-day Adventist practice, open communion. And as Jesus, uh, as the original communion service, uh, there was a foot washing that preceded the partaking of the bread and wine. So too we practice that. And we invite, invite you to partake of communion if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with us. But uh, Desire of Ages, page 660, says, These things we are never to forget. The love of Jesus, with its constraining power, is to be kept fresh in our memory. Christ has instituted this service, the communion service, that it might speak to our senses of the love of God that has been expressed in our behalf. There can be no union between our souls and God except through Christ. The union and love between brother and brother must be cemented and rendered eternal by the love of Jesus. And nothing less than the death of Christ could make his love efficacious for us. It is only because of his death that we can look with joy to his second coming. His sacrifice is the center of our hope upon which we must fix our faith. Do you believe that, friends? I do. One more, par uh, one more short paragraph. Looking onto the crucified Christ, we more fully comprehend the magnitude and the meaning of the sacrifice made by the majesty of heaven. The plan of salvation is glorified before us. The thought of Calvary awakens living and sacred emotions in our hearts. And the thought of Calvary draws us uh, the thought of Calvary awakens living and sacred emotions in our hearts. Excuse me. Praise to God and the Lamb will be in our hearts and on our lips. For pride and self-worship cannot flourish in the soul that keeps fresh in memory the scenes of Calvary. He who beholds the Savior's matchless love will be elevated in thought, purified in heart, and transformed in character. He will go forth to be the light of the world, reflect in some degree the mysterious love. The more we contemplate the cross, the more fully we shall adopt the language of the apostle when he said, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has crucified me and I in the world. We come to partake of the communion service today. 
not because of our worthiness, but because of Jesus' worthiness. He takes care of our physical needs. He takes care of our heart's needs. And he looks forward when we will be with him face to face. He will not partake of this communion service until we are with him again in the kingdom. May the Lord bless us as we enter into this service. We will separate at this time for the ordinance of humility. And the men will attire to room B. The ladies will attire to the fireside room. And if you'd like to partake of communion as a family, you will attire to the multi-purpose room. All of the rooms are just down the diagonal walkway. If you'd like to remain in the sanctuary in an attitude and prayer of reverence, we'll be back in just a few moments. We will separate at this time for the foot washing service and return momentarily.